Welcome to the WWE Podcast. Your place for the most passionate wrestling analysis on the web. Just turn Roman heel. What is WWE waiting for? When other wrestling podcasts put you to sleep, you can count on the WWE Podcast to keep you engaged and asking for more. I've been watching wrestling for over 20 years, and that was one of the best matches I've ever seen. This is unlike any other wrestling analysis. So without any further delay, let's get the show started right now. Hey guys, welcome to the WWE Podcast. Thanks so much for joining me on uh, this what the heck day is it? Tuesday, January 7th, 2020. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And uh, this is the very first time in which we are doing live video. Um, and actually, well, this is being recorded live as you watch it. Um, this is going to be on uh, on delay and uh, only available for Patreon subscribers. So thank you guys um, for those who have uh, who have been subscribing to the show for a long time. Thank you very much. And for those of you that are brand new, welcome. And I hope you enjoy this uh, this show because this is, as I've said in the past, this is a show by a fan for fans. So um, definitely want to thank everybody for um, f- for their support and uh, their critiques over the years. Uh, thank you guys so much. And um, so, look, this is Monday Night Raw, or this is the uh, not well. This would have been the Monday Night Rollins show. It is now become uh, just well. We're on the road on the road to WrestleMania, but it has become. A mixed bag of drama with Lana and Lashley uh, and the Monday Night Messiah is where I was going. The Monday Night Messiah of Seth Rollins. Love that name, by the way. Love the Monday Night Messiah name, nickname. Very, I think it's very powerful. I think that it's, um, it's catchy. I like it. I'm a big fan of the Monday Night Rollins um, uh Deal, and I think that it's something that could grow, and I think it, they're on the right path. I think for sure that Seth Rollins. I've said this before. Seth Rollins is on the right path to uh, becoming, I think, everything that he could be as a heel, right? Because we all know Seth Rollins as a babyface simply wasn't working. He's pushing back on the fans, saying that, "Oh, this is you guys. This is you're the ones who have done this. You saw. You appointed me." And now you're blaming me. It's it's great stuff, really really good stuff by Seth Rollins, um, and really the AOP. What can you say? They don't say much, but they don't need to. Um, so we're gonna get into the Seth Rollins, and we're gonna get into Oscar Becky, which started to turn into a bit of a um, emotional roller coaster for Becky, losing a bit of her confidence in that segment, and concerned that she may not beat Asuka at the Royal Rumble. And so the first time we've seen the man vulnerable in a in a program since she won at WrestleMania last year. So unbelievably, we are coming up on almost a year with Becky Lynch as the Raw Women's Champion. And uh, I, I think that they will run to WrestleMania with her as champion. Again, um, I know that some of you out there feel that Asuka could be the one to take it away from her, but why would they do that when they are just a few months away from WrestleMania? So my opinion, and I, I guess I'm kind of burying my uh, prediction, but again, this is a few months out, is that Asuka loses to Becky at the Royal Rumble, and then Ronda Rousey makes her triumphant return to to, uh, to get her revenge, exact her revenge on Becky Lynch, in which you set up a Ronda Becky main event for WrestleMania. Well, one of the main events of WrestleMania, one on one for the Raw Women's Championship. Just my thought. Just my thought. Um, so we're going to get into all that. We're going to get into the good, the bad, the ugly, including the Lana Lashley Rusev story that just won't die, uh, and the fan that screamed, "This is the worst thing I've ever seen." Anybody else catch that? Oh, I loved it. Whatever fans scream that, I want to give you a shout out here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, to say, hey, awesome job. Thank you so much for just saying exactly what needs to be said. Uh, 
and that is that this storyline is it's done. <laughs> it has been done since week two. Uh, so, at least in my opinion, I know viewership may dictate otherwise, but eventually, even bad TV that's so bad that people watch so it makes it almost good, will catch up to itself and reveal its true colors as just that. An awful storyline. Awful. That is hurting everyone involved. And really, I know that many of you, oh, it's great TV. This is sports entertainment. And great, that's your that's your prerogative, just like this is my prerogative to say that this is terrible writing. Lana, I think, and this is insane, to say, but I think I finally put my finger on why this sucks so much. Unbelievably, I'm going to say this is is this is terrible because of Lana, and I know that she's been getting a ton of like actual hate in Twitter on social media. Actual hate. That's not my message. That's not what I am. Uh, what I'm actually trying to convey. I, I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't actually hate Lana, right? So let's let's first just delineate that because I know Lana has truly been getting hate uh, messages and actual like death threats and stuff like that. It's just nonsensical garbage. Um, but what I'm saying is Lana's performances on the mic have been god awful and god awful since day one. And I don't want to hear that. Oh, it's designed to be bad. No, no. Because she's stumbling over words. She's not... What's the word? She's not very eloquent. She's not very well-spoken. She's kind of all over the place. She doesn't use the right words. It It's just uncomfortable to watch her because you know she's struggling, but... It's almost as like almost as if WWE says, "Well, she's she's good looking enough to overcome all the the the, the train wreck that is Lana on the mic." So we're gonna get to obviously that in more detail too, and uh, much more, uh, including next week's preview of Raw, which is lining up to be a pretty big show with Randy Orton, AJ Styles, um, Alistair Black, and Buddy Murphy. Back by popular demand is apparently the case. Uh, th- that's next week on Monday Night Raw. Oh, and I didn't even mention that Brock Lesnar is actually going to enter the Royal Rumble and win the Royal Rumble. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm going to get into those possibilities as well if he wins the Royal Rumble, which, spoiler alert, I don't think he will. So, um, guys, so we're going to get into all of that. I've got so much more to talk about. Um, including giving you guys um, a, a bit of a preview of the Rumble as I start to see it come into focus now, just two and a half weeks away. I'm really starting to see this thing light up. And it's becoming clearer, I think, where they're going. So we're going to get into all of those things and uh, so much more. But I just want to take a pause for the sponsor of the show. And then we will be back on the other side. And again, guys, those on video, it's just going to be a uh, a minute break because you don't have to listen to the uh, to the um, to the ad because guess what? You have an ad free experience on patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Um, so you this is just going to be kind of a minute of like, hey. Me chilling out, but on the other side, uh, we're going to get to all of those, all of the content of WWE Raw and so much more. So stay right here. Peace, prosperity, and the family. The Kilimanjaro Tribe app is about residual income, network and referral marketing, you promoting your service and content to the app, and sharing it. For every 100 people that you sign up to the app, you get 80% of the earnings. At $10 per person every month, that means that you get $800 per month, minus Stripe service fees used for payments. No followers. Create your own group of motivated paying members to build a community that participates and unifies on the spiritual, physical, mental, and economic growth. For every 100 people that you sign up to the app, you get 80% of the earnings. At $10 per person every month, that means that you get $800 per month, minus Stripe service fees used for payments. Start earning income after the 21st person that you sign up to the app. Must be a registered active company with a blog or podcast linked to your company. Every person that you get to sign up has the same opportunity to become a contractor and earn residual income just like you after 30 days. January 24th, download the app, pay your $10 membership fee, and start turning those $10 referrals into a nice month of income to invest in your business. And this message was sponsored by the We The Future Movement. 
All right, guys, welcome back. Thank you uh, for staying with me. And um, so let's just let's just get into something that I really, but what really bothered me from Raw, uh, and and it's not so much a rant as like what the hell's going on. And I, I tweeted this out immediately following the Andrade Rey Mysterio match, and I, I would say that this is probably just a simple miscommunication, and the referee was trying to make sure that the Plan, the plan finish went into uh, went into effect and was executed, and that was Andrade and uh, Rey Mysterio at the end of the match. Which, by the way, ha- they had an amazing match. They always do. Uh, I could watch these guys you know, for forever. I mean, they they are just they, they gel extremely well, um, as Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy do. Right, you could just watch them forever. Uh, so they had, a, I think a stellar match up until the last the last minute or two with Rey Mysterio being accidentally launched into um Zelina Vega on the outside and you have Andrade number one Andrade did it because Andrade was on uh on the shoulders of or Rey Mysterio was on the shoulders of Andrade and Andrade launched her him into her and then Rey Mysterio was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I have a wife, I have kids. Um, and by the way, let's not forget, that's the woman that just cost you the championship a few minutes earlier by putting Andrade's leg on the rope. Yeah, let's not forget that. Um, but Rey Mysterio gets all bent out of shape. They come in the ring, and Andrade um, first goes for the hammerlock DDT. And uh, the the referee breaks it up, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, why the hell is the referee breaking it up? Doesn't make any sense. Why is the referee breaking up this um, the, the maneuver unless Rey Mysterio is truly injured? And he wasn't. Rey Mysterio just needed to go back out to act more concerned, so that he can come back in, and then the reason he loses is because he's distracted by what happened to Zelina. You know, the woman that ended up costing him the championship. I know that the the idea is that Rey Mysterio is the good guy and that we are all that that he feels sympathy for hurting a woman, right? Because God forbid there's any male on female contact in WWE. I mean, it just is prohibited no matter how many times a woman screws over the man or physically attacks a man or slaps him or kicks him in the nuts or does whatever the man just can't retaliate which is total lunacy in my eyes um, especially in the world of professional wrestling you know the environment that isn't real right but they have sponsors and they have people that uh, they have a younger audience and oh we don't want to make sure that people don't think we're promoting domestic violence it's a bunch of horse you know what, right? I mean, that that is a whole show and a whole rant that I've been on way too many times, so I'm going to stop there. But, um, again, Rey Mysterio looking like a fool and then gets his mask ripped away and um, Andrade claims that he has basically de- or dethroned and humiliated Rey Mysterio. So this program's not over, Right. This program is not over by any means, and I'm fine with that because Rey Mysterio and Andrade is a, is a story you could tell for months. I mean, you just could. Uh, and so I, I also like the fact that they aren't splitting Zelina and uh, Andrade. And you could say, oh, well, they showed cracks of it a few weeks ago. And yeah, they did. And I think they decided not to, and they went the other way. Um I think that that may have been the plan, and then once they decided to put the United States Championship on him, they said, "Hey, they're gonna need. He's gonna need a manager. He's gonna need somebody to uh, to to make sure he continues to win as a heel. You have to have help, and not all the time, but in this case, I think Zelina and Andrade work so damn well together that it just wouldn't make sense for them to." Uh, to split them. But nonetheless, I, um, Rey Mysterio loses, uh, as expected. Andrade retains the championship. I think Andrade is positioned for big things in 2020. Um, and I love the match. Just outside the finish, which was just ridiculous. I mean, tell me anybody, anybody, tell me how that finish made sense. And I, I would just chalk it up to the simple fact 
that uh, they had a miscommunication and the finish, uh, the, the referee wanted to make sure that he, uh, the, the true finish actually happened. So I'll, I'll chalk it up to that. Um, the other thing, so the next thing on my mind, as I'm going a little bit out of order, but um, uh, again, some of you love that, some of you hate it. I, I've got such mixed feedback on that. I mean, I've had people get all bent out of shape because I went segment by segment in a show. Like, I mean, I gave my show my initial thoughts about some big ticket items at the beginning of the show, and then people go, oh, what are you doing? Why are you going segment by segment? Well, here, here's the thing. Number one, it's my damn show, right? My show. So I run things the way I want to run them, right? And number two, I'm covering everything that I can going segment by segment. If I just use my brain to, to navigate me through the uh, events of Monday Night Raw, I'm not going to cover everything. And some people love when I cover everything that happened on Raw. So, short of it is, my show, baby. I call the shots. If you don't like that I do things segment by segment, you may have to live with it some weeks because that's what I do. Um, I, I go off the, the cuff and I just I go with what is what I feel in that at that time. So, um, I just wanted to... to Give you guys that that I don't always follow that same format of segment by segment, um, but anyway, moving on. I the other thing I want to talk about the big ticket item is Brock Lesnar entering himself in the Royal Rumble. Now I know that um, in the past Roman Reigns has put his championship on the line in the Royal Rumble match, and I thought that's where they were going to go. And Paul Heyman cut a brilliant promo again. Um. Paul Heyman just continues to light it up on the mic. Just, I mean, this this guy has a a gift of gab, and he ends up telling everybody that Brock's going to enter the Rumble at number one, and uh, that he's going to win the Royal Rumble match. Now, the one big question he didn't answer: What happens when he wins again? If this plan happens, and if this is your plan, what happens when Brock wins the Royal Rumble? I thought he was going to go by the um, the arrogant notion that no one deserves to be in the main event of WrestleMania. No one is worthy of being in the main event of WrestleMania with Brock Lesnar except Brock Lesnar. So Brock Lesnar would make it Brock versus Brock at WrestleMania. And that's what I thought he was going to say. Um, but my assumption would be that you have Brock versus The Fiend because that would be the other championship that he could go after, the top belt. Um, I highly, highly doubt that that's how they're going to go. Very unlikely Brock wins the Rumble. I would say it's like a, a, a 50 to 1 odds uh, that Brock wins the Rumble. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes it until the last you know five, six guys and there's going to be some damn cool moments in the Royal Rumble match with Brock Lesnar in it. If very interested to see who number two is, um, I would assume that Brock's going to hang in there for quite a while, and whoever whoever he eliminates or eliminates him likely will face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. It's very likely, probably a big name, maybe Edge. Um, I, I don't know. Edge is rumored to be coming back. It's no secret. Uh, it's the worst kept secret in WWE right now that Edge is uh, apparently training to come back. Uh, he delivered a spear. A number of months ago on SmackDown, and that was the first any first thing he has done physically in WWE since he retired back in 2011 against uh, Alberto Del Rio in a main event WrestleMania match. So my assumption is, I mean, could it be Edge? I don't know if you want all those Germans on uh, Edge, but and I don't even know how you would get that to be. Edge versus Brock. I mean, I'm really going off the cuff here. I'm just trying to think of how this plays out with Brock in the Rumble. I don't think any of us expected Brock Lesnar to be in the Royal Rumble match. And uh, that's not a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing by any means. I think it's intriguing as hell with so many big names in there. um, And and you know immediately who's going to be number one. Um, This whole Royal Rumble match is shaping up to be intriguing as hell. Because you have... Potential returns, um, Edge being number one, the ever uh, everlasting rumor of CM Punk uh, uh, making his return in the Royal Rumble match, which I think is highly unlikely, but not in the realm of impossibility, right? So uh, you have that. You have Roman Reigns entering. 
And that doesn't exclude guys that are in any other match on the show. I've said this before. I said this on the show with Mary last week is that, hey, uh, don't count out people that are already in matches. Don't count them out. They're not excluded from the Royal Rumble match. But by the way, how do you get in the Royal Rumble match? Are there qualifications? Do you have to have a certain resume, a certain win-loss record? Do you have to have, should you have held a championship in the past? Uh, have, do you have to be tenured in WWE? Um, do you have to sh- ask management? Nope, nope, none of that. The only thing you have to do, the only method to get into the Royal Rumble match is simply to declare it. You just declare it. That's it. You just say it and you're in. It's silly. And I understand Brock is is a shoe in and he's deserving and he's the most decorated athlete in WWE is I don't know somebody said Vic Joseph or somebody on Raw I might have even been uh, Jerry I said that uh, Brock Lesnar is the most decorated athlete in WWE history really Beyond Undertaker Austin Rock Triple H eh, I wouldn't go that far um, nonetheless I guess these little these little things. These little things uh, get to me, but again, all you have to do is declare it. It's if any of you have seen The Office, if any of you have seen The Office, um, it it was when Michael Scott went broke and stood in the office and said, "I declare bankruptcy," and he thought that that was how you declare bankruptcy. It felt a little like that. It, it, Royal Rumble season always feels like that. It just feels like Michael Scott standing in a room uh, saying he declares things. And you just you just say it and then you are, right? Um, I, I guess that's just how it is. And it's uh, I, I know that you, you can't have a tournament. You can't have a, a championship or a, a match for every spot in the Rumble. I understand that. But maybe you have... Uh, a, a battle royal of sorts where the last five guys standing are, you, you could do it in mass uh, or qualified for the Royal Rumble match. There have been Royal Rumble qualifier matches in the past. It's a thing. It's happened just like King of the Ring, right? And I don't want to see again, the, the logic of WWE sometimes is a little bit backwards. Attack a champion and you get a championship match. Declare that you just say that you're in a match and you're in a match. I don't know. Um, and all you have to do, by the way, if you're not at the Rumble match, here's a simple strategy for y'all. Uh, just kind of hide in Gorilla, attack that person from behind, and then uh, just take their spot. That's it. Yeah, that's all you do. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple. It's really actually really, really, really simple to win the Royal Rumble. You know how you win the Royal Rumble? If, if common sense actually uh, was a thing, you would wait till number 30. You would uh, wait for them to come out. You attack them from behind, take them out. So you, that means you instantaneously earn their spot. And then uh, you just kind of hang out the ring. You can hide under the ring. You can hang outside the ring. Just wait for the everybody else to eliminate one another. And then it's just down to you and one other person. That's all you do. That way you get a 50-50 shot. That is how you win the the Royal Rumble every single time foolproof. Yeah. I know I just took all the fun out of the Royal Rumble match for everyone, but when you when you apply common sense to this match, just as you have, if you applied common sense to a ladder match, right, where guys suddenly can't climb a ladder even though they're world class athletes, they can't get up that ladder to get the championship, or cage matches when they open the door and suddenly they're you know it's like they're in quicksand or or, or uh, mud and they can't move their feet to just simply walk out a door. I mean, some of these things I, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. If I'm taking the fun out of wrestling for you right now, but sometimes it's a glaring asshole. Um, ooh, that was an interesting combination of words. I didn't mean it like that. It's a glaring hole. How about that? I didn't mean it in a cuss word. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I didn't mean it like that. It's a glaringly big hole. Okay. Um, so <laughs> that's really funny. Uh, so anyway, um, let, let's move on here. Let, let's get into a little bit more of the Monday Night Raw, um, Monday Night Raw show. Some of the other big things that happened. Um, we had the Street Profits versus the OC and the Viking Raiders for the Tag Team Championships. This match surprised me in its quality, 
And you may say, why? These are all great athletes. Yeah, well, they haven't got a whole lot of time on Raw in the last couple of months. The Viking Raiders, since they've won, have been kind of in hiding, right? Um, the, the Street Profits, thank God they're not backstage acting like obnoxious jerks, uh, just standing you know, parallel to each other, facing the camera, yet talking to each other like everyone does, and acting like you know they're there to just just talk nonsensical, uh, nonsensical crap about everyone that's going on, everything that's going on in WWE. I like that they're not doing that stick anymore, and they're actually competing in the ring. Um, the Viking Raiders are still champions, obviously after he uh, after Carl Anderson took the fall, and uh, I, I'm fine with that. They the announcers stressed to the max about how the OC are the only ones to hold victories over the Viking Raiders. That's an important point to make. I like that they drove that home. Um, that was, I, I think, it was important because it shows that the Viking Raiders are um, really are a strong team and that for whatever reason, the OC have their number, except for, obviously, last night. So... That, I think, was a good point to, to drive home. The, the other thing is, um, well, really, the Street Profits. Did anyone really believe that they were going to win? No. No. It, it was essentially a, a, a really just a standard tag team match between Viking Raiders and the OC in terms of the two teams you believe that could win this. But it's important for the Street Profits to get in there, to get in the mix, to make them feel like they are a, the, the true players in the game. And to have a good showing, um, that was important for them. That's what they were there for. It makes total sense. I loved this match. I thought it was very well done. Um, I, I didn't have any issues with this match. It was a. It, it really was good. I mean, from top to bottom. Um, so, it, the only thing is, hey, Vic Joseph. Every time someone makes a tag, I don't need to hear you say tag. I have eyes. Okay, this isn't radio. I can see. With my eyes, if someone makes a tag. I understand if you do it once in a while, someone else could be talking and that guy just goes, tag. Thanks, Vic. Thanks. It makes Michael Cole seem desirable. Through all of his, it's boss time. And it's the big dog. And and all that nonsense. I, I swear he does that just to piss off fans. Or he's directed to say it every time. I, I don't know, but I, I could go on a rant about that for for an hour, and I'm not going to do it because I, I, it's 10, 15, 10, 20 right now at night, and I have to get up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So I, I'm going to conserve my energy. My son's also sleeping, so I'm going to make sure that I don't wake him up either. All right. Certain things are worth yelling. That is not because I have yelled about it to the nth degree. All right. Eric Rowan also won a match, by the way. Eric Rowan versus KJ Orso. I think that's how I said I said his name right. Um, he, he had the cage again. I don't even. I swear. I don't think WWE management know what is in that cage. I don't think anybody knows yet. It's just kind of like, hey, why don't you just carry on this thing with a bird cage with a a, uh, I don't know, a rug or a cloth over it, and we'll figure out later what it is. It'll just interest people, and uh, maybe it'll you know draw some interest. And it's the mystery. It'll keep people hanging. No, it's not. I'm not that interested in it. Eric Rowan is a character. I've, I know they tried to do something with him over the summer and give him the opportunity, and it just never took off. It never took off because we didn't want it to be Eric Rowan attack who attacked Roman Reigns. We all wanted it to be Daniel Bryan behind the whole thing, and uh, it wasn't. And Eric Rowan just he's never caught on, and it's not to say he can't ever catch on. Um, but I don't know if he'll ever ever be at that level again in the main event with Roman Reigns. I, I just I don't I don't think so. I really don't. Um, okay, AJ Styles versus uh, Akira Tozawa was an interesting matchup from the perspective of it was essentially a squash match, which I I, I know why they did it. It was to simply uh, and and my God, uh, it was to simply I hate saying the corporate language. Send a message. We all have to send messages, right? Just, I'm just going to have, uh, you know, just have all the wrestlers show up to the show and have a table out there the second they walk in. So when they come in the door, just have have an have an envelope, have have some stamps, 
and then have a piece of paper and some pens and pencils. That way, uh, they can all send messages to each other as much as the announcers say that they're sending messages to each other. And that way that they are truly living up to sending messages because apparently everything that ever happens in WWE is a sending a message or making a statement, right? That's every, it's, it's their two favorite go-to, um, go-to platitudes that they say every single effing week. And this was, this particular segment was ex- especially nauseating only from the perspective of the announcers. I, I like what AJ Styles did. I liked he, him mocking uh, Randy Orton, using his maneuvers. Uh, Akira Tazao getting squashed. Eh, I mean, when you look at the hierarchy of Raw, it makes sense. But when you look at the ability of the two guys and the ability of those two who could have an outstanding match, the way that that played out, you'd go, mm, right? You, you, you kind of like cringe at the possibilities uh, of what it could have been had the story not been dictating that AJ squashed Akira Tozawa. So, I mean, I know why they did it, but I also like that Randy Orton took the week off and we didn't see Randy. That's good. Fine with me. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm sure the live crowd was waiting for an RKO. I'm happy that Randy took the week off. Um, I mean, there's only so much they can do with these two guys right now with um with orton and uh with aj but they'll be facing each other next week so big big raw i what's happening is wwe is getting their individual programs out of the way so that it can make room for everyone who's available to come into the royal rumble match they are trying to make the rumble match huge this year i can i i, I mean this just what they're doing um and i also think part of it is damn we have six, had six weeks to build these programs and I don't know what else to do. Let's just give them the match that we would have given them at the pay-per-view slot at this point, right? Because this would have been the four week mark. This is four weeks and we still have two weeks to go from the last pay-per-view and typically three to four weeks, there's a pay-per-view and the writers just probably wrote to the fourth week and go, hmm, well, um, they got to have the match now. What's next? Right? So there's a little bit of that and a little bit of let's get this, let's get the matches that we've been building to for the last few weeks out of the way now so that we can truly build to the build to the Royal Rumble and put these guys in the Rumble match instead of going, hey, you've been building these guys at a, in a program together. Why aren't they in a match? Well, let's get that out of the way and then we can focus on the bigger task at hand, which is the Rumble match itself. Uh, so that's what I think they're doing. Um, but overall, again, AJ squashing to Akira, fine. I mean, I'm fine with it from, from the storyline perspective only. Um, and so that's a good thing. And don't worry, guys. He sent that message. He sent the message and he made statements uh, and all that stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know. That, that, that kind of stuff really, really, I don't know. Because it's just the reason that I, I kind of go off on this stuff is because I don't like corporate language that is drilled into people's heads. Like for, here, are the, here are just a few examples of the phrases that you hear every single Monday night, and really every, every every Friday night now. You hear just every time, big dog. You hear boss time. You hear uh, making a statement. You hear sending a message. Uh, I would like those four phrases to just go off and die. Just a slow, painful death. I also, like WWE Universe, everyone is forced to say WWE Universe. You can't say fans. Yeah, no, fans have gone away. Fans don't exist anymore. We're all just out there in the ether floating around the universe uh, making up this WWE uh, sphere, right? That's just what we are now. We're just in the WWE sphere floating out there in space. Um, And that's just what we are. We're no longer fans. Fans have... Uh, uh, taken the train and they've they've uh, they, they've gone away. We are now part of the universe. It's it's such a corporately created uh, stomach churning t- phrase that I I just I don't know. It, it embodies what I dislike about the PG corporate era. It is just this in- incessant need to just latch onto a phrase and make sure it's said every single time, like monster among men. Really? Was he a monster when he was dancing with the new day who are more concerned about making uh, pancakes every week and pouring syrup on them than actually winning? And and so Braun Strowman joins in like a fool 
I mean, come on. I, I, I don't know. So here, here's where I'm going to go off the rails, but I'm going to catch myself. I'm going to take a breath. We're going to take a break. And again, for those of you on the live stream who, are, who have uh, seen me on and are going to watch me on Patreon, exclusively on Patreon, you don't have to hear those ads, right? So if you're interested in hearing an ad-free version, you just head on over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast, and you can get a video podcast for the very first time on Patreon. It will be exclusive there. I won't be video videoing every single show, but I will be doing a video at least once a week um, on one of my shows. So... All right, well, I'm going to take a break, and then we'll be back on the Finish other side. Prosperity needs family. The Kilimanjaro Tribe app is about residual income, network and referral marketing, you promoting your service and content to the app, and sharing it. For every 100 people that you sign up to the app, you get 80% of the earnings. At $10 per person every month, that means that you get $800 per month, minus Stripe service fees used for payments. No followers. Create your own group of motivated paying members to build a community that participates and unifies on the spiritual, physical, mental, and economic growth. For every 100 people that you sign up to the app, you get 80% of the earnings. At $10 per person every month, that means that you get $800 per month, minus Stripe service fees used for payments. Start earning income after the 21st person that you sign up to the app. Must be a registered active company with a blog or podcast linked to your company. Every person that you get to sign up has the same opportunity to become a contractor and earn residual income just like you after 30 days. January 24th, download the app, pay your $10 membership fee, and start turning those $10 referrals into a nice month of income to invest in your business. And this message was sponsored by the We The Future Movement. All right, welcome back. And uh, let, let's continue with the Monday Night Raw review. But before I do, I want to let you guys know about the schedule remaining for this week. Tomorrow, Ashley joins me. And I know that uh, you guys have been looking forward to that. So she will be with me tomorrow night as we uh, have our wrestling discussion. And I don't, I don't even know where it's going to go. You know, normally I have a wrestling nostalgia on Wednesday. Uh, maybe we'll do a little nostalgia. Maybe we'll talk about what's going on now. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, it's always a great conversation with her. So it's, I'm going to leave it up to fate to decide. And um, then Thursday, of course, is your AEW Dynamite Aftershock Review with Zach Perez. And then on, um, on Friday will be your NXT Review, and that'll be coming to you from Chris with our uh, WWE Podcast team. If you guys – oh, and, and then Saturday will be your regularly scheduled program with a, a co-host talking about WWE Week and Review. A couple of notes here. If you are interested in producing a podcast under this feed – Send me a DM at the WWE Podcast on Twitter, or you can email me at realwwepodcast at gmail.com. Um, and what I'm looking to find is someone with previous audio, ex- audio experience, somebody that loves wrestling, gotta love wrestling, otherwise, why do it? And uh, is available to po- do a show once a week. Their own show, they can do their own intro, they can run it how they want to run it. Maybe it's just an alternative perspective on the product. I know we cover all bases in terms of every promotion and we have a nostalgia segment, all that, but maybe you want to do your own nostalgia segment. Maybe you want to give an alternate perspective on the the show this week or bring up points I didn't bring up, whatever. Um, Hit me up at uh, the real WWE podcast at gmail.com or on Twitter at the WWE podcast. You can also hit me up there. Um, I'll probably be asking for an audio sample. It is an unpaid position at least for the time being. And uh, so if you're interested, hit me up. I'm looking for one more show. The reason I'm looking for one more show, I have six shows right now. Why not make it an even seven for every day of the week? So um, that's that's the reason for it. Plus, I know you guys love content and you can't have enough content. And uh, I know many of you take me with you to work or school in some cases um, or when you're just lounging around the house and I appreciate that, and I want to be able to give you a new voice, and uh, maybe I'll create my own show. But right now, three shows with me on them every week is about my max right now in terms of my free time, uh, as I, I, i.e., why I'm recording this at 10.30 at night on a Tuesday night. Uh, normally, I am sleeping r- right now. Um, obviously, I'm not. I'm here with you, and I'm here with you because we love WWE. All right. So... Um, then we get to, I'm trying to go to a good thing before I get to the the, the, the not so good. Um, Drew McIntyre versus No Way Jose. Drew McIntyre wins. Uh, it's a good thing. <laughs> I just, No Way Jose had, you know, less than a zero chance of winning. Uh, no Way Jose is just Adam Rose 
in 2020. That's it. And it's a damn shame um, what they've done with No Way Jose, who is just a glorified um, jobber at this point. Drew McIntyre wins. He continues to squash matches. And by the way, if you guys haven't seen Drew McIntyre, uh, his new... Um, he, he was on, what was it? Not 365. Seth Rollins was on 365 on the, on the network, which was very good, by the way. Very good. Um, Drew McIntyre has his own... It's only like a 15-minute uh, show on the WWE Network. I'm going to try to pull it up on my phone here. Those of you on video here, bear with me as I know I'm looking at my phone. Um if you want to get more of an insight into Drew McIntyre, oh, it's called Break It Down. Uh, Break It Down with Drew McIntyre. It's only 15, 20 minutes, uh, but it gives more of a, a humanized version of Drew McIntyre from his initial push in WWE in the 2000s where he was the chosen one to TNA Impact, back to NXT becoming champion, and then back into WWE. So um, it's quite a quick abbreviated version of his story in wrestling. And I, I'm a huge fan of this guy. I know many of you were saying, Oh, turn him face, turn him baby face. I, yeah. I think he could be a good face, but right. I still haven't seen the, the full blown heel run that he could have. I, I feel like there's a big run in him in, in, and there, and we just haven't seen it. Uh, nonetheless, uh, anyway, so I would recommend you guys check that out. But back to Monday Night Raw. Aleister Black versus Shelton Benjamin. Aleister Black wins again. I mean, Aleister Black is just right now on a uh, uh, on a tear. I don't even know if Aleister Black has lost a match since he's done his whole... Um, you know, whoever wants to knock, I'm going to fight you or whatever. Um and the interesting part of this match, yes, Aleister Black won, obviously. But after the match, Buddy Murphy attacked Black from behind and beat him, beat him down. He takes Black to the outside and slams him into the timekeeper's area, then hits a running knee to the face, grabs a steel chair, and uh, stalks Black. Murphy tried to knee the steel chair into Black's face, but Black is down and the ref calls for help. Um, so, again, that's what's set up next week. But back by popular demand. Uh, yeah, which is true. Um, But I thought, and I've said this, and I'm going to back it up, that after Aleister Black hit Black Mass twice, clean, beat Buddy Murphy, the heel, and he he didn't just beat him with two Black Masses, he also beat him at TLC. Why the hell are these two facing each other again? Because the fans love it. And look, I respect that. Just from a storyline perspective, this thing should, should be over, but all right. So another good thing I liked... Uh, which was the main event, and I'll talk about that before something I don't like. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys some good stuff here. Seth Rollins in the AOP versus Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and a mystery partner. And the mystery partner, I'm thinking, no, nah, I can't be CM Punk, right? Can't be. And it wasn't. It wasn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't de- redebut one of your hottest star potential stars um, and, and potential biggest return of all time at a Monday Night Raw in Oklahoma City in the middle of January. You, you just don't do that. Uh, but I knew it had to be a big name, and you know, have you know, it has to be a big name because of the fact that it's in the main event, and there's only seven minutes to do the, do the main event, so it's going to be somebody big. Um, and I was thinking, well, it might be Umberto Del, or um, uh, Umberto, uh, Umberto Carrillo, and I'm thinking, well, no, he's got. They replayed that whole package of him getting DDT'd on the concrete with from Andrade, so it wouldn't make sense for him to get involved with AOP and Seth. I, I couldn't think honestly of who it was going to be, and lo and behold, it's the Big Show, um, which I think he got his biggest reaction of his entire career. This is an example of distance makes the heart grow fonder, and certainly with the Big Show, the fans embraced him. And um, I, you know, from all the days of the Authority and him and Kane, uh, all that stuff when the Big Show was involved with the Authority and getting booed, and it was just oh my god, the Big Show again, the Big Show again. Amazing what just some time off will do. And again, they said that he hasn't been on Raw in two years. I believe it. And, and at least in a wrestling capacity, I believe it. Uh, and it was good to see him back. It, it felt it felt nostalgic. Um, he isn't obviously as quick as he was. Not that he was ever a jackrabbit in the ring. But he uh, certainly was serviceable. 
and was in a big full sweat before he even got the tag in. <laughs> I mean, before he even got the hot tag, it looked like he ran, you know, like six, seven miles. Uh, that was pretty funny. He was in a full, full ass sweat. And uh, it was just funny. But the big show comes in, gets a hot tag, puts the heels down. Uh, eventually, uh, Seth comes in with a steel chair, hits Big Show for the disqualification, and then AOP and Seth go on their beat down of everybody tear until uh, until he gets Seth gets KO'd by the WMD weapon of mass destruction. By the way, um, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe were just kind of in the background this week, um, and I know, I know that maybe you know you can't have it hot every week, but it felt like a little bit of a cool down for Seth or for uh, for Samoa Joe and KO. Uh, this was more about the Big Show's return, and I don't know how long Big Show physically is going to be involved here. I would think probably just an entrance. Uh, he'll take up an entrance in the Royal Rumble. Uh, you know, he'll come out, maybe clear the ring, and then get eliminated. Um, I, I think that's what it's really here for. Is just like a three week contract. Um, that's really it. So interesting, though. I mean, it was a good segment. I, I would say it was a it was a good segment this week with Seth AOP and Samoa Joe and KO, but it wasn't what it was last week. It was just kind of like uh, okay, like I mean, it, it progressed things, but this was more about the Big Show return, which overshadowed everything. Um, not that he's a mega mega star, and not that he will be getting that massive pop- positive reaction he did this week, next week, or the week after. But certainly, uh, this progressed the storyline. And was good. Again, I'd give it like a B minus, C plus. Like it was okay to good. Um, and I, I'm fine with that because it did what it needed to do. It main evented Raw on top of it. And it, it, it again, it, it served its purpose. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that because I, I don't want to repeat myself anymore. Um, so that's another thing I liked was the main event of, of uh, Monday night. Uh, so here we get to the thing that I wasn't a big fan of, right? <sighs> this Lashley, Lana, Rusev, career-killing angle that all these men and women are involved in that's becoming so convoluted. <sighs> so, this is... Uh, I, I don't even know what this is anymore. I, 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 I just don't. I just don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, re- I just... <sighs> so the wedding official came out and he officially married Lashley and Lana, which, by the way, I mentioned this too on Sunday with uh, with Mary Grader. Um, pretty sure that you don't need to have somebody there in order to actually get married. You sign the marriage license, you have a witness, and you call it a day. So why would they risk somebody else coming out to interrupt if that was truly... That ceremony is truly dependent on its completion to be married why would you risk going out there with for more drama instead of just doing it privately if you truly wanted to get married again i shouldn't apply this common sense as i did at the beginning of the show but common sense sometimes just overshadows uh, all the illogical things that happen anyway uh so lana comes out and does her usual weird choice of words and her uncomfortable promo um, and screaming, and then you have Rusev appear on the screen saying he's at the beach, which I don't know if they were truly trying to make us feel like he was at the beach. It was clearly a green screen. I, I would I would th- hope WWE isn't trying to truly make us feel that Rusev was at the beach. Okay, please. But um, he's there and uh, says that, they think everyone else is miserable, but it seems like Lana and Lashley are the most miserable people in the arena. And he forgot to give them a wedding present, so he put together a wedding album, which was just video highlights of the ruined wedding from the ceremony last week. And Lana screams at Rusev that she hates him and ruins everything. It's terrible. Lana is terrible on the mic. She is responsible for a lot of why I don't like this. I don't care how good looking she is or how nice her body and her curves fit into the latest tight dress or whatever or the whatever push up bra she's wearing. That that to me isn't enough to offset her terrible choice of words and her uncomfortable promos. Um so anyway, 
Um, moving on as with this segment here, Lana screams, and again, Lashley tells Lana to shut up. And the crowd silenced themselves for that and, and, and popped a little bit. And then he called out Rusev now. Uh, Lashley says if Rusev has any balls, he should show up to Raw next week so Lashley can rip them off and shove them down his throat. And that Ru- Rusev says he will return next week, but he will be doing the unspeakable things to Lashley. So they're going to go in and uh, have a, uh, a match, uh, I guess. Um, oh, and, and how in the hell can I forget this? Uh, next week, we are having a fist fight with Seth Rollins, AOP, KO, Samoa Joe, and assumingly the Big Show. It's a fist fight. You know, as opposed to the other just traditional chain wrestling matches, we're going to have a good old-fashioned fist fight. What in the hell could that possibly... I'm scared. I, I, I mean... I, I don't know. I don't even know what to make of that. And I know I'm prejudging it before it's actually executed. I get it. Really? That's what we're going with now? A fist fight? Oh, boy. I, I'm nervous. I mean, there's a fist in every single match. Every single wrestling match since about 2000, there has been an actual fist. Again, not a, I mean, uh, we're not actually throwing true fists. I get it. I'm talking about when since the perception that people are punching each other in wrestling matches was a thing. There has not been a break from that. So I don't know what this fist fight could mean. I have no idea. The Besky, Becky, Besky, Becky, Oscar segment, I thought was good as well. It served its purpose, I think. Um Interesting choice of an outfit for Becky in that yellow jumpsuit she was in or whatever. I mean, I'm not dissing it. It was just interesting, and it certainly stood out to me. Uh, Asuka came out and did her usual two words of English here and there, mostly screaming in uh, in her native language, and then us going, huh, what? Uh, you said Becky. Oh, got it. Okay, you said Becky. And then, oh, wait, I got the word you. Uh, oh, wait, I don't know what the hell you're saying anymore. And then, and then Becky just lays her out with a punch and leaves. Um, I'm, I'm look, I'm looking forward to this match. That's not what I'm. I'm really looking forward. This could be a show stealer. I really think that these two have that good of chemistry. They have the history, uh, and I think they have the ability to do it. So I'm really looking forward to this match at the Royal Rumble for the women's Raw Women's Championship. That's not the problem. So I'll praise them on that. That, uh, you know, as terrible as Asuka's promo abilities are, they will make up for it. She will make up for it in her in-ring ability at the Royal Rumble. So, uh, I just... Why why continue to run Asuka out there? Is the idea that she's a heel and it's obnoxious that she's speaking in her language and that we're supposed to like her, dislike her because of that? Well, wouldn't we dislike Rey Mysterio, who does the same damn thing? I mean, Rey Mysterio does it on a weekly basis. And sometimes he'll, after he speaks in Spanish, he'll translate whatever he just said into English. Although he really didn't this week. It's obnoxious when they do that. I mean, who do they think the majority of their fans watching uh, are, right? United States, English-speaking citizens. That's just a fact. Um, but we have them. We have Asuka come out there. And if, again, if the idea is to make her heel doing that, well, she did that as a babyface, and it was super obnoxious and just... It was almost it was annoying to the point of learn some effing English, and I don't mean that in oh you should learn our, you learn our language or leave the country. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you want to like build your brand and be a successful pro wrestler and market yourself, wouldn't you want to learn the language better? I, I mean, it just makes money sense. I really don't know her extent of the English language, but it can't be very vast. It can't be large. Her English language is just, I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. If I was in my, I don't know. If I was in uh, Italy, right? And I, I live there. I I am uh, a pro wrestler in Italy and they have a massive promotion. And I know that 90% of the people watching understand Italian but I still speak English and people don't know what the hell I'm talking about. 
shouldn't I just learn the language a bit and be able to communicate with the people that are watching me? Instead of just relying on, ah, well, it's okay, you can speak in your native language. You're a heel that'll piss them off that you think you're better than them by speaking in your language. And they're annoyed that they can't understand what you're saying. And they feel stupid because you don't know, they don't know your language. No, no, no. That's a lazy analysis. That's lazy thinking. That is a short-term cop-out for being able to market yourself at a higher level by understanding their language and, and speaking their language. So... I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the 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 old adage of oh well they're just they're the foreigner they're the evil foreigner they're speaking no 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 stupid I don't care if you do it and then maybe have a great English promo beyond it like again Rey Mysterio does this in most cases speaks in his language and then speaks in English and basically translates what he just said I don't know just some food for thought um, so but anyway I'm looking forward to this match Becky's kind of just doing her thing and, and fans still love her. So, all right. Well, uh, that's my raw analysis for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, we are officially in my eyes on the road to WrestleMania. Royal rumble is just a few short weeks away, two and a half weeks. So that's coming up real quick. Um, looking forward to that. And those of you that are on the live stream watching, um, or are watching this, in delay or on delay. Thank you so much. Um, I realize that as you're watching this, um, I have the image mirrored. So my logo on the back is actually uh, flipped. So it looks like it's backwards, but it just because I didn't put my damn camera the right way and uh, I will flip the script and get it uh, facing the right way. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yes, watching. Those of you on Patreon are, are the only ones that can watch at this point. I may be bringing video eventually to the website and maybe eventually to uh, the Apple Podcast feed. But for now, it is going to be a um, exclusive to Patreon. So keep that in mind. And um, guys, I want to thank you for listening and watching. And I'll be back tomorrow with Ashley to cover, you know, who knows, current product, little nostalgia, probably a rant in there somewhere of course, and um, lots more good stuff. And again, you know the schedule for the rest of the week. Again, if you want to be a part of this show and have your own podcast on this show, in other words, on this feed, do your own show, hit me up at the Real WWE, uh, the WWE Podcast on Twitter or Real WWE Podcast at gmail.com if you want to get yourself on this uh, on this podcast and, and deliver your own content. I'd love to have to have you be a part of the show and be a part of the WWE podcast family as this show continues to grow and uh, ascend in the rankings. Alrighty. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching, so much for listening. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.